All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It's Neil Winteregg here with Dr. Greg Winteregg uh, for Matterhorn Business Development. Obviously, with the current situation going on, we are social distancing and we are working from home. So I'm at my kitchen table. Uh, Dr. Winteregg is in his self-promotion cave. And we are here to talk to you about times of adversity, uh, your mindset, things that you can do. And so uh, the perfect guest for that is actually my dad, Dr. Winteregg. So hello, Dad. Hey, Neil. And just by the way, we're more than six feet apart. I think it's about five miles. Yeah, we're several miles apart, <laughs> which is good. That's what people are supposed to do right now, although right. the streets are still busy. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, uh, the reason that we've got Dr. Winteregg on is actually because he was doing a live stream on Instagram with one of our clients the other night, and he told a story that not many people actually know. It's not that it's a hidden story. It's just, it's something that happened very long <laughs> time ago. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and so because it happened so long ago, not just many people know the story. And it was about dealing with some adversity. Um, you said that, how old were you? I was nine. Okay. In 1965. So 1965. Yeah. Nine years old. And uh, for those of you that the story we're going to tell is that um, in one night, my dad, as they were growing up, Ross lost um, their home and the restaurant, which was the family business and the only source of income for the family, all in one night due to a tornado. And you gave some really good advice that night on dealing with these types of situations. Obviously, this isn't a tornado, but um, I would say the tornado was worse than what is going on now. So for our family, it was. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you tell the story about what happened and what you guys did, and then I'll pick your brain as we go through it. Sure. So um, my dad and my uncle opened a small restaurant one month after I was born in 1955. And I was born in June of 55, and, and the, the restaurant was growing slowly, and it had become, by the spring of 1955, it had become pretty much a local establishment. It was sort of like a Al's Diner off of Happy Days where there was inside dining, there was car hop service. And we... Uh, and what was in, this and what was the name of the restaurant? It was called the Poplar Drive-In, P-O-P-L-A-R, because the lot was lined with poplar trees. It was a very nice setting. And across the driveway from the restaurant was um, our home. We lived in a house trailer. And we had just gotten a new house trailer about six or eight months prior. And we were really excited. The restaurant was expanding and doing well. And my uncle was working um, the Sunday afternoon evening shift. And we went to Fort Wayne, Indiana uh, to see Mary Poppins. And on the way back, we heard on the radio that there was a tornado headed towards our little town. And uh, when we got home, the tornado fortunately did not go down Main Street, which is the direction it was headed. It took a turn to the north. The unfortunate part is it went right over our restaurant. It was a block building. Uh, it took off the roof. It knocked down two sides. And I'm going to have uh, Aaron, our editor, I'm going to have him throw a slide up right now because I do have an aerial shot of what was left of this uh, little restaurant after the tornado went through. And you can see... Um, the, the building is gone. The roof is gone. In the foreground of this picture is the lumberyard, which the roof was ripped off of the lumberyard. You're looking at all the exposed wood there. And if you look just uh, beyond the restaurant to the left, there's a concrete slab. That's where our house trailer was. And uh, we got home that night. Uh, everything was gone. Uh, my dad told us all to stay in the car, my brother and my mom and I. And... Um, he went to make sure that everything was fine. Nobody was injured in the restaurant. Nobody was, was there injured. people in the restaurant when it came through? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was my uncle was working, and I think there were six patrons. And uh, everybody just kind of hit the deck, and the roof went, and the walls went out, not in, and everybody's fine. There was a bowling alley uh, just on the other side of, uh, of our restaurant. Uh, there were some wounded, injured people there. Um, our friends, the owners of the restaurant or the bowling alley were in their house trailer and they were up in the air like, uh, you know, Wizard of Oz, Dorothy uh, flying around in the air. Um, one of the kids got hurt, broke his leg pretty bad, but uh, nobody was killed. 
But um, the point here is it's really awful to go from like, this is your business, this is your life, and it's looking pretty good to just having everything wiped out. It's just in the blink of an eye, it's all gone. So what was, so you guys pull up, you see that your house is gone. Like, was there anything left? No, 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 it was just gone. It took the frame of the house trailer and bent it around a big uh, Indiana and Michigan telephone pole. Uh, There was no other sign of anything in the house trailer. Our dog was home and uh, she ended up, uh, we found the dog. The dog was alive. Found the dog. Uh, this happened on a Sunday night. Um, the dog was found on Wednesday drinking uh, out of a pond of uh, one of the local dentists, and we had her name on it. So uh, she had a gash in her chest, but she was fine. But it's kind of like you go from like normalcy to like tragedy in just the blink of an eye. So then, when you guys pulled up and realized that the house was gone and the restaurant was gone. Uh, what was grandma and grandpa's reaction, your mom and dad's reaction and how? Well, my dad immediately took control. He was, he, he was in the army. Um, he was never shipped out overseas, but he had a lot of discipline and he's like, okay, everybody stay here. I'm going to run inside, make sure everybody's okay. Uh, there was a gas tank that was leaking. They had to turn the gas valve off. Um, so he came back and we went to my grandma and grandpa's house, his mom and dad's house, and dropped off uh, my brother and I. And then my mom and dad went back to the site and just to start to assess all the damage. And when I was on the live stream uh, last week with the other client, uh, I, I made a point and I want everybody to kind of really take this to heart. Not once did I ever see my mom and dad freak out. Everything was calm. Everything was fine. We're going to grandma and grandpa's house. Everything's good. We got up the next morning. Yep, we're going to go back out. We're going to start to see, you know, uh, what can be salvaged, et cetera, et cetera. And not once did I ever see my mom and dad freak out. And looking back on it now, I was nine, soon to be 10. My brother was three years younger than me. Um, As far as we were concerned, it was a bad thing that happened, but it was all going to be fine because mom and dad were fine. So because they didn't freak out and get weird, you guys just were calm. We were just calm. And so we stayed at Grandma and Grandpa's house, and um, there were 77 tornadoes in Indiana that day. In so one day? In one day, there were 77 tornadoes. Uh, there were some communities that the, the tornado didn't turn left and just went right down Main Street. So there were some communities that were just devastated. So there was pretty much death and destruction all over the state. And um, people brought clothes to the church. They brought games to the church. So we just went down to the church uh, the day after. And it's actually two days later. And we got to pick out some clothes and we got to pick out some toys. And uh, honestly, it was just kind of like, yeah, this is just what happened. And we ended up uh, living with, with my grandma and grandpa, uh, for probably about four to six weeks that we found um, the top part of a large home downtown to rent and uh, just started to put our lives back together. So then what did grandpa do to get the restaurant back up and running? Because I know he was smart. So what did he do? Really, really an incredible story. Uh, winter egg is Swiss. And I was raised in a little Swiss community called Bern, Indiana which was founded by ancestors that all came over from Bern, Switzerland. And so the whole community pulled together. And it's and a small community, right? I mean, how many people? 3,000 people. 3,000 3, 3, people. And so the guys from the lumber yard were good friends with my dad and my uncle. Was this the lumber yard that was right next to the restaurant? Right next door. Right next so door. We know where the lumber yard ate lunch every day. Exactly. Totally. And sometimes my dad would carry the food over if they were busy. I, I would carry the food over if they were busy. And I got to have Aaron throw this the picture up. This is uh, the lumber yard, Sam and Charlie, who own the lumber yard. They put a big sign out by the road, open for business. There's no roof on the place, but they were open for business. And so my dad and my uncle knew everybody who worked there, and they just brought over a bunch of wood. 
And they went over to the concrete slab where the house trailer used to be, and they built a little shed. And they took uh, the bar stools out of the, the damaged restaurant, and they set up a little counter that would seat six people, maybe five. The fryers were back there. The grills were back there. And I'm telling you, man, we cleaned off the property, and in 10 days, we are open for business. Run, running the restaurant out of the little shed with card service. So the shed had all the fryers and food in it. It did. And just started doing like a drive up service. Yeah, drive yeah, just you just like happy days, you know, the waitress would run out and take your order and come back and we just and so the and here's what's really cool, because there's gonna be awesome stories like this out of this whole COVID nineteen episode, is we qualified for a low interest government loan and rebuilt the restaurant about four times bigger. Uh, wow. This time it had a full basement with concrete beams and a concrete slab, which ended up becoming a registered tornado shelter below where <clears throat> lots of people, we could probably put in that tornado shelter easy, 100, 150 people if we ever had to again. But the rebuilt restaurant and, you know, this, this picture is probably taken around 1967, I would guess. It took about a year and a half to get the restaurant going again. And, um, you know, it's got a grainy, grainy uh, texture to it, but this is what the new restaurant looked like. And then once the business got rolling again, and we could focus on rebuilding our home. So again, we got another low interest government loan because we were victimized by the tornado. We bought a two and a half acre piece of property and built a, a nice house. So. If you take a look back, the whole process took about three, maybe four years. But you look back and the restaurant was bigger. It was more popular than ever. We went from a 63-foot house trailer to a nice house on a wooded property. And so that's kind of the American way as far as I'm concerned. It's kind of like this entrepreneurial spirit. This will not break us. We are going to pull this together. We're going to do everything we can. We're going to have our friends come and help us. We're going to turn around and go help our friends. And we're going to have story after story after story of just exactly, you know, those kinds of stories from this COVID-19 experience. So another question is, you, Grandpa got the shack set up. Grandpa and his brother, I should say. Yep. It was D uh, Doyle? Doyle, yeah. That's, yep. That was okay. Uncle Doyle. Yep. So... Grandpa and Doyle get the shack set up. It still takes, you said, 12 to 18 months to get the restaurant rebuilt. Did yep. they operate out of the shack for 12 to 18 months? Yeah. <laughs> totally, man. Totally. What about like yeah. the winter time and stuff? Oh, yeah. Through yeah. the winter, yeah, totally. Totally. And in the winter, I mean, uh, you had to get the, the fryers food. had enough heat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was insulated and I mean, it was, I, I, I don't know if there's any pictures of the little shack that was built. It, it was, uh, it, it truly is an American success story. It's American inspiration story. But I guess, you know, I just, it was never discussed. It's just kind of like, whatever the barrier is, we just figured out the solution. And we all worked together, my, my aunt, my uncle, my cousins, uh, there was three of them, my brother and I. Uh, that restaurant ended up putting me and my brother and all our cousins through college. And, uh, you know, when my dad and my uncle got older, they sold the restaurant. But I'm just saying it's like, this is, this is American, the American spirit, the fighting spirit. And there are obstacles, there are barriers. Yes, it sucks. And you know, there's just, there's just a way through and it's just all part of the game. And, um, we just, we you just guys yeah. could have, you know, grandpa could have easily shown up and, you know, everybody could have started crying. Yep. You could have lamented and, you know, talked about how bad life was. You could have just taken some sort of insurance money and gone and moved or, you know, yeah, that's, just hard. people can give up after a time of, something happening. People can yeah. give up and just roll over and, and say, I'm done. Yep. Or in 10 days, get the show back on the road. Yep. And then in, in total grandpa fashion, he made the place bigger. 
you know, say, oh, well, if I can get a loan for this cheap, then I'm going to make it bigger and fix all the crap that we never had the money to fix before. Yep. And I will tell you, my dad told me he never wanted to work for anyone. He was always going to work for himself. Mm -hmm. And the way we ran that restaurant was really smart is one family would open at nine in the morning and then at two or three o'clock in the afternoon, we'd switch shifts and the other family would close. And in 1967, this is just two years later, uh, the, the new restaurant was up and rolling and Expo 67 was in Montreal. We took three weeks. So they opened and closed the restaurant from nine in the morning to 11 at night, the other family, three weeks while we went on vacation. And then when we came back, we worked from nine in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. But that's just like, that's the advantage of having your own business. That's a, a, the advantage. And you work hard and then you get to play hard and um, you manage it all right. I mean, my dad didn't have a lot of debt. He didn't, didn't believe in credit cards. And, you know, so it was, um, I was really raised in a true entrepreneurial spirit. My dad was always creating. Um, I, came, I came to the restaurant from school one day after school. And on the empty lot next to us is all of these huge, long railroad ties. I'm like, Dad, what are those? He said, well, a trucker came in and he was mad that he was supposed to deliver these railroad ties to a job. And he got there and the business was closed. And then he was complaining he's going to have to drive all the way to Michigan when he had to really be in Florida. So my dad says, well, what if I just buy those off of you? And I'm like, Dad, what are you doing with railroad ties? Well, those are landscaping ties, Greg. And he just put a for sale sign out there. And like in a week, all the railroad ties are gone. So my dad was just always thinking, you know, you guys wonder where I get it. You know? <laughs> I think my favorite story about grandpa is um, how old was he when he had peanut machines around oh, town? Yeah. He, was, he was eight or nine years old and lots of kids had paper routes. You notice when I said the restaurant was open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., Grandpa did not get up early. So somebody else can deliver papers. You can get out of bed at 5 a.m. Grandpa's not getting out of bed at 5 in the morning to deliver papers. So there was a, a fellow in town that had peanut machines. And you've probably seen these where it's got peanuts or gumballs. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and you put a nickel in. Now it's a quarter. And you get a handful. So... Uh, my dad went around town. He made the deal with the guy who owned the machines and he got the peanut machines put at the barber shop and the dime store and the dry cleaners and the grocery store. And so my dad would run his route two or three times a week, refilling the peanuts and taking the money and getting his split. And so he was making money on his own when he was eight or nine years old. He was uh, <laughs> quite, quite the entrepreneur growing up. So, um, I think that's where I get it. I know that's where you kids get it. Uh, Grandpa started the whole thing. Definitely, yeah. definitely. But it's different times, you know. Like yeah. that. That's awesome. I think that those yeah. are great. So, um, I think it's a great story, and I think it tells everybody that they can do something in these times, you know. And this is something that I talked about in a live stream last week, where I said, uh, you know, people are going to fail are always going to look for a reason to fail. Yeah. And people who are going to succeed, overcome the obstacles. And I think grandpa could have freaked out. You know, everybody could have cried. You could have lost the trailer. You could have lost everything. You know, you had just lost everything. But yeah. instead, it was very calm. I'm sure that they, when you kids were asleep, they had some. some I'm sure cards. they had to have their moments. <laughs> and I also want to throw in, so. So that was uh, 1965, 1973, there was an oil embargo and there was an oil shortage. Right. So depending on your license plate number, if you had an odd number, you could get gas on odd days, an even number, you could get gas on even days, waiting in line at the gas station to get gas. I graduated from dental school in 1981. Prime interest rate today is like at 0%, 1%, 2%. When I graduated from dental school, prime interest rate was 21%. I had to borrow money to open my dental office, and the banker gave me a deal at 19.5%. I borrowed $45,000 at 19.5. And then about eight months later, the realtors are getting crushed 
because a home mortgage was like 16 and a half percent. So they ran a 90 day special at the bank, 14.5. And I bought my first house. So, you know, we can go into agreement with the stops and barriers. We can go into agreement that these obstacles and challenges are, are too big. Uh, since 1981, there's been stock markets, ups, downs, real estate, bubbles, all of this. And, you know, I've made money, I've lost money, but it's just always on to the next game, on to the next adventure. Uh, you know, there's no crying in entrepreneurship. You know, they're just like, this is the game. These are the barriers. How are we going to figure it out? I think that that's the right way to look at it. And yep. uh, thanks for telling the story again. I'd heard pieces of it. <clears throat> yep. But uh, you just recently got those pictures, didn't you? Yes. My, uh, my brother recently found them and sent them to us. Yeah, so, so that uh, kind of brought this whole story back up. That's what kind of, yeah, yeah, revitalized the whole story again. So, you know, everybody has their challenges. You just kind of pick it up and go. Yeah, for sure. Well, everybody, that's what we have for you today. Hopefully, this was entertaining. Hopefully, you can apply some of this. Stay calm, stay collected, get your thoughts together, hit your goals. We're going to pull through all of this. And I think this advice is not just, you know, I think this is just good advice any day of the, any day of the year, you know, yep. how to prepare for and plan for and handle problems that you run into. Okay. Yep. Don't, don't succumb to them. Just keep it rolling. And uh, we're going to get some more content out to you guys. We're obviously not able to film in our usual, usual location. So we're doing it from here, but we're going to keep the content coming uh, hit the like button down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and we'll see you later. Have a good one. All right. Thanks guys. Take care. Bye.